Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I honor you right now. Thank you for everyone watching and listening to me right now. It is your truth that is piercing their hearts and bringing them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you for your glory that is being made revealed, is being made known all over the earth. Lord, the earth is realizing this truth that you are the Lord. And they are acting accordingly. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hear me. The year is going to end well for you. Trust me. Despite everything you see going on, the year is going to end good. Praise God. Yeah, you know why? Because God is with you. What did he say? He has said he will never leave you nor forsake you. You know the reason? The reason is so that you will boldly say, Think about it. It isn't so that you have money. It isn't so that nobody will kill you. It's so that you will boldly say, and let us confess. What's the confession? The Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what any man will do unto me. See? Now, he's not saying you just go and say, the Lord is my helper. You know, your brother, father, you are my helper. So I will not, no, 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 no. That's not what he's talking about. He is actually saying, look, I'm going to be so with you. I'm going to stick with you. That this will be your confession. Well, how do you confess that? When something happens, and, and someone's going to come to you and say, what's going on? I don't understand you. Everybody's going down and you're going up. How? And that's when you now say, you know how? The Lord is my helper. Praise God. Yeah. And you see, God will always be faithful. 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 He's a faithful God. Now, whatever is going on in the country, inflation is rising, price of commodities are going, they are skyrocketing. Yes. The Bible talked about these days, so it's not strange. Praise God. But what do you do? This is the time to go sit down with God's word. You look at Psalm 112. It says, the, the man who fears the Lord, he will not see when heat comes. He won't see it. He won't see it. He didn't say heat will not come. He says he will not see. Why? Because his news media it's from a different place from, than the ones you're listening to. You're listening to the news. You're tell, hearing them tell you, oh, price of this have gone, this, this is this. He's listening to heaven. And heaven is saying, this is the time to do this. Yes, sir. Who do it? Who do it? And then the money is made available and he goes on to do it. So that's how to operate the system of God. You listen and you act. It doesn't matter what the situation is. You listen and you act. I remember several years, many years ago, I was still in school then, you know, schooling up north in Zaria. Now, we, we went to pray, about three of us, incidentally, my wife was with me. Now, of course, then we didn't even dream of getting married because we were in the same fellowship then. So she was with me and then another brother. We went to pray. I think we went to pray from either 10 p.m. to 12 midnight or from 12 midnight to 3 p.m. That was our intention. So we went out to this open field in the night to pray. And we were praying. And suddenly, these uh, vigilante men with guns surrounded us. And with their guns pointed at us, and like, get up, stand up, hey, what are you doing? No, no, they, they, they were speaking house at them, and none of us could speak the language. So when I saw that, you know, with their torches and all that, I said, hey, hold up. What's the matter? Oh, blah, 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 blah. 
I, I, we, I, we try to communicate with them, and then they say, oh, we, they must take us to the school security. So, I say, okay, let's go. So we are students, that's it. We are students here. So we went to the school security office, and now we could express ourselves there, and they will understand, so we thought. They're like, oh, we're still, what were you doing there? Oh, we're Christians, we're praying. Why are you praying at this time of the night in an open field? I said, that's what Christians do. We pray where we want to pray. <laughs> we were not disturbing. We said we didn't want to pray in our rooms because we would be disturbing other people. So we went to where we're not going to disturb anyone. We were not disturbing anybody. Oh, no. So they said, cultists. I said, we're not cultists. Did they see us doing anything other than praying? And then they spoke the language to the people. And then suddenly, and while we're doing all these explanations, I began to ask the Lord, Lord, what do we do? And, and suddenly one of them said, we should all go behind the counter. So I'm like, for what? He said, no, we'll stay there till morning. Ah, at that point I said, Lord, what do we do now? And I heard the Lord say, go home. It was clear. I heard him just say, go. That's all he said. I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, go home. I said, okay. So I turned to the two people with me. I said, let's go. And they just followed me. Now, we were here arguing with these people. You're going behind the counter. We're not going behind the counter. Why should we go behind the counter? We're students. What have we done? What crime? You know, we're explaining all that. And then the Lord said, go home. I said, let's go. And we walked right through all of them. And no man uttered a word. Nobody said, where are you going to? Nobody. I mean, that was a miracle in itself. We just kept walking straight and walking straight. You know, you know at the back of your mind, thinking someone said, stop there. And nobody uttered a word. And that's how we left. You see, so what matters is the voice of God that comes to you, not what is going on around you. And that's why, you know, sometimes believers don't understand these things. So you think, you know, sometimes you get into a challenge and then you think you can explain yourself out of it. You must learn to trust in the supernatural power of God in every way. I'm telling you the truth. Look at the disciples. We read about them in, in scriptures. For example, look at Paul's life. You know, like I've been talking about understanding. So even when you read the scriptures, it's important you see. May God open, open your eyes to see. You know, I was meditating on this one time. And I, Paul and Silas, they were arrested. And they were locked up in the jail. Of course, there was a charge against them. And they, they, they were kept in jail that night. So the following day, they will take them to court and judge the case. So they were beaten and then they were locked up. And that night, while they were praying and, and, and singing, the Lord sent his angels, broke their chains, opened the prison doors, but they refused to go out. They sat down there. And the jailer comes and saw, saw the whole place open. And, and they... He brought out, he almost killed himself, so the Bible says. And then Paul had to shout, hey, don't harm yourself. We are all here, complete. Nobody escaped. He said, what? And he came in and guessed the first thing. He said, please, I want to get saved. I want your God. And the Bible said, Paul led him and his household. They all got saved, see. And I said, no, no you, they, 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 by the next day, they sent an official statement, an official writing, communication to the prison, to the jailer, and said, please free those men and let them go. And Paul said, no way. You're not going to free us in secret. You have made us look like criminals in public. You must come to the public, judge this case, and find us not guilty. And he insisted on that. Now, there's a reason for that. that that's wisdom. You know, sometimes you get into trouble, and, and, and some, some things have been said against you that you are completely innocent of. And then you get to that point, you're just happy that they've told you to go. But your reputation has been tarnished. See, Satan knows what he's doing. So you must learn working with the Lord. You must learn to deal with the devil in that aspect. You must release an official document saying these things never because I'm telling you the truth, tomorrow Satan is going to use it against you. 
And I said, why didn't you deal with him then? He said, but, but I just felt, no, you don't just feel. Be smart. Now, supernaturally, they got delivered from prison. And then the jailer got saved and his household because he saw the power of God. Now, you see Paul when he went to Jerusalem and then he was arrested. And then he, he went, you know, he was going on trials. Now, Paul came out in his intellectual self and began to narrate and explain and explain what he was doing and explain what he was doing. And then get the, mo <laughs> the most he got out of Agrippa. He said, Paul, you almost convinced me to be a Christian. He, he, did, he didn't get born again. He just said, you almost convinced me to be a Christian. Now, we think that's good enough. It wasn't good enough. Not almost. He should have gotten saved. You know why? Because... Paul, at that point, was trusting in his capability or in his ability to explain himself out. No power of God was made manifest in that place. So I look at that and I go, How, what, what happened here? And of course, the Lord told me a lot, you know, from even that Paul's experience. So you learn. Listen. Never play with the power of God in anything that you do. You must, you must see. See, remember where I started from? He has said he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You must get to that place of understanding where you know that God is with me. Now the same thing with Stephen. Stephen died because he was trying to explain himself. He had the opportunity to bring forth the power of God in that situation, but he didn't. When he saw Jesus, he said, he, he confessed and said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. That was Stephen's confession. So when you saw Jesus standing there, what did you do? Now I've heard preachers say, Jesus had to stand up to receive the first Christian man there. That's a lie. It's a lie. Jesus actually stood up to save Stephen. But you know how these things work? It is what you say with your mouth that will bring you condemnation or that will bring you justification. When Stephen looked up and saw Jesus in that revelation, what came out of his mouth? Into your hands, Lord. I commit my spirit. Please don't hold this sin against these people. That's what he said. Brothers and sisters, that wasn't good enough. You remember Jesus on that cross. It was when Jesus opened his mouth to say, Father, it's done. Into your hands I commit my spirit. And that's when Jesus gave. He had to offer that it is, I'm done. It was when he uttered it that he gave up the ghost. So sometimes God is waiting for what you are going to say. Elisha was being surrounded by an army. He knew that the angels of God are already surrounding him. And what did he say? He could have said, angels, if anything happens to me, just take me to the Lord. But what did he say? He said, Lord, can you smite them with blindness that they will not see? And that was exactly what he got. He got blind and he led them to the, to, the, to, the, to the king. You know the story. So when you see things, understanding on what you should do. Now this is where wrong teachings have affected a lot of people. There are many believers who have died that we're not supposed to die. God is always faithful. But do you understand what he is doing? The Lord told me this several years ago. The Lord said, when you come face to face with death, watch your tongue. 
the power that death is going to have over anyone is not absolute power. It is derived from the place of the person's confession. If you can watch your tongue and master your tongue, I'm going to make a statement that will shock you. Even God cannot kill you. I say, what are you saying? I'm telling you the truth. If God wants to kill a man, which, which he doesn't, you know, he puts it in your mouth. He's a, he's a prison. That's how it works. He puts it in your mouth. So if you watch your mouth, even Jesus, that's why all of a sudden, now this is someone who came to give us life. Suddenly he began to confess, I will die. I will die. What do you think was going on? I pray God gives you understanding. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, this is exactly what I pray for. Understanding of your truth that we may know and walk in it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.